Thank you for joining us for best practices and tips for operation of cat wheel loaders. This video is intended to provide operators of K-Series large wheel loaders basic proficiency for efficient machine operation. This video will also provide information for operators who wish to improve their knowledge on wheel loader controls and operating procedures of K-Series large wheel loaders. This video contains only theoretical content and demonstrates pre-operating and basic operating procedures. This video does not attempt to certify an operator or replace on-site training. This video is designed to provide you with fundamental understanding of machine operator safety, the location and function of the operator controls, startup and shutdown procedures, and basic operating procedures that include bucket loading, truck loading, load and carry, and floor maintenance. Today we will walk through these procedures and practices on the CAT 988K. When mounting or dismounting the machine, always use the ladders, stairs, and steps provided, and follow the design method by using the handholds. Review the proper procedure described in the operation and maintenance manual. Face the machine while mounting and dismounting. Use three points of contact when mounting or dismounting. Always use two feet and one hand, or two hands and one foot to keep a firm balance when you move. Never jump off a machine from any height. That's an easy way to sprain or break an ankle. You could also hit your head on the machine, which would cause even more serious injury. K-Series large wheel loaders are equipped with several ground level safety features. Located in the rear bumper of the machine is a stairway light switch, transmission lockout, engine starter lockout, and an emergency shutdown switch. It's very important to perform a daily walk around on the machine and visually check for any areas that may require service or scheduled repair. Pay close attention to the condition of rims and tires, inspect the linkage pins, hitch area, and underside of the machine. Located on the back of the machine is the rear vision camera, which can be cleaned while standing inside the rear bumper handrail. Also located on the back of the machine is the cat detect, backup alarm, and VIMS blue light. Also located in the bumper is the jump start receptacle and on this tier four final machine, an amber purge light for diesel exhaust fluid. This light will turn out when the DEF fluid has been purged back to tank. At this time, the operator can turn off the battery disconnect switch. Hydraulic fluid can be checked on the side of the machine using the sight gauge. Transmission fluid level. Checking the transmission fluid level and adding fluid when necessary. Located at ground level, the loader provides locations for fueling and filling the auto loop system. Also located at ground level is the auto loop fill location. If equipped, optional fast fill is also located on the fuel tank. Certain tier four final loaders use diesel exhaust fluid or DEF. The DEF fill location is at ground level. DEF must meet international organization for standardization or ISO 22241-1. The DEF and fuel tank should be filled at the same time. The burn rate of DEF is typically 2.5 to 3% of your fuel burn. Located inside the engine enclosure is the engine oil dipstick and fill. The operator can verify oil level by removing the dipstick.
An egress ladder is located on the side of the platform on K-series loaders. Cabs are also equipped with alternate exits. Refer to the operation and maintenance manual for specific locations on each model. The upper platform allows the operator to access the engine coolant sight gauge and the door located on top the engine coolant fill. Before operation, always inspect and fasten your seatbelt. Let's review the gauges on the dash cluster. In the top left corner is engine coolant, below is hydraulic temp, on the right fuel level, and if equipped, diesel exhaust fluid level and torque converter temperature. Now we'll cover the indicator lights on the display, starting at the top left-hand corner, working in a clockwise pattern. Left-hand turn signal, right-hand turn signal, engine emission system failure, brake warning, economy mode, lift control float, regeneration status, high exhaust temperature, ride control, implement lockout, reduced rim pull, engine failure lamp, and primary steering pressure. In the center left, you have the action lamp and park brake indicators. The digital display shows gear, direction, ground speed, and service meter hours. It also indicates if the following features are active. Throttle lock, auto shift, engine idle shutdown, delayed engine shutdown, seat belt is on, lockup clutch, and if a regeneration has been canceled. The right hand cab post contains controls for the front wiper, rear wiper, automatic temperature control, temperature setting, fan control, running light switch, work light switch, HID lights if equipped, the stairway light switch, beacon switch if equipped, and hazard lights. K-Series large wheel loaders are equipped with a soft keypad. Here the operator can adjust several machine settings. Let's review each button. Starting at the top left, Auto Shift has two modes. In mode one, you will notice that the machine will start out in first gear. By pressing Auto Shift again, you are now in Auto 2, driving the machine to start out in second gear. Below, you can use the up and down arrows to select your max gear that the machine will shift into. Next is the lockup clutch button. This disables second gear lockup only on the loader. Following this is rim pull control. When all three lights are on, you have 100% rim pull. As you push the button and turn lights out, you are reducing rim pull. Again, when all three lights are on, you have 100% rim pull. The next button is ride control. This turns your ride control system on and off. Following this are your kickouts. The first is your upper kickout. Press and hold the button until it blinks and beeps. The second is your return to dig kickout. This sets the level of your bucket edge. If equipped, following your return to dig kickout is your heated mirror. You can also adjust the backlight intensity by hitting the last button and dimming the lights. Moving on to the second row, you have throttle lock on or off. As an operator, if you choose to set throttle lock, you have to turn this button on to set your engine RPM. For machines equipped with an auto lube system, the next button allows you to force the auto lube to grease while you're in the cab so you can verify the system is working properly. The next button is your lower kick out. This stops the linkage at the lower position by holding down until it beeps. Then you have economy mode. By hitting the eco button, this actually provides throttle on demand for the operator. Engine speed is controlled automatically. 
The last button on the keypad is the help assist. By pushing the question mark button, you can actually hit a button that you want to learn about on the keypad, and it will give you a description on the bottom of the touch screen. The graphical information display has two home screens. Default, as shown here, is the quad gauge showing machine parameters. The second is a work monitor providing real-time fuel burn and lifetime average. If equipped, production information is also displayed. Now let's review the navigation buttons on the outside of the screen. The first is display settings. Returning to the home screen, we have machine settings, followed by totals, and then service, and lastly, operator on the right-hand side. The last shortcut button on the left side is for payload. Located at the bottom of the touchscreen is the information banner. Now let's review the payload home screen and the information that is available to you as the operator. Number one displays the total of the material loaded into the truck. The smaller number indicates the number of passes in the truck. Bucket weight will instantly transfer to the truck when the scale weight is calculated. Number two displays the weight of material currently in the bucket. Number three displays the remaining weight needed to achieve the target payload for the currently selected truck. Number four is bucket zero. Use to zero a bucket on startup when prompted or when carryback is occurring and not able to be removed. Number five is estimated weight. Number six is material ID load site ID select. Number seven is truck ID select. Number eight is the delay code button. Number nine is minus one pass and truck clear. Number 10 is the store button. This should be pressed at the end of a truck to store the data to memory and update lifetime and trip payload totals. Below the keypad, you have the electro-hydraulic or EH park brake and the implement lockout switch. To the right is the machine ignition. To crank the engine, turn the key to the far right. When shutting down the machine, turn the key to the 12 o'clock position. In certain situations, the machine will continue to idle, cool down, and purge diesel exhaust fluid back to tank. Only in an emergency shutdown situation should you turn the key to the orange position or 11 o'clock. Also on the dash if equipped, is the tier four regeneration switch. Leave this switch in automatic. If the machine is key cycled, it will return to the auto by default. Only in certain situations do you want to take the machine out of automatic regeneration mode. The right hand armrest or implement pod has the following controls. Throttle lock, resume or excel. Throttle lock set and decel the payload store button, if equipped, the turn signals, the horn button, the tilt and lift lever, and both are equipped with soft detents. The left hand armrest contains a steering lock. Now in the unlock position, the operator is able to articulate the machine side to side. He can also upshift by hitting the upper yellow button and downshift on the lower. On the bottom side of the joystick is the forward neutral reverse switch, F and R. Large wheel loaders are equipped with three pedals on the floor. The first one on the left is the impeller clutch torque converter pedal, or ICTC. This pedal actually controls rim pull, or power, that is applied to the ground while using the loader. As you push in on the pedal, it cuts rim pull 
and effectively reduces tire spin while loading the bucket. The last 10% of travel is actually brake. ICTC is very important during normal operation. It allows the operator to modulate the machine during directional changes, enables smooth transitions during the work cycle, prevents tire spin, and balances rim pull with hydraulic power while digging with the bucket. The next pedal in line is the service brake pedal. This allows the operator to stop the machine at any time. On the far right, you have the throttle pedal. This allows the operator to manually control engine speed during operation. The upper touchscreen display houses the rear vision camera, which is a standard feature on large wheel loaders. If equipped, the machine may also have cat detect that will give the operator warning of any objects in his or her rear path. K-series large wheel loaders are equipped with a standard delayed engine shutdown. When the operator turns the engine off by turning the key to the 12 o'clock position, the machine will go into delayed engine shutdown mode. The operator should not override this feature. As shown on the display, you can see that the machine is in shutdown delay, do not override. Only in a safety emergency situation should the operator turn the key to the 11 o'clock position and override the shutdown. When the operator turns throttle lock on and sets the engine RPM at a higher level, after five seconds of inactivity, the machine will kick to low idle. When the operator goes back to work on the implement pod, engine speed will resume automatically as shown here. Every machine has a corresponding operation and maintenance manual or OMM. These manuals contain warning sections on how the machine should or should not be used. The OMM is located in the literature holder or seat back storage area. The operator should become thoroughly familiar with its content before operating the wheel loader initially. Before operation, mirrors should be adjusted on the outside of the cab, maximizing rearward visibility for the operator. Before production loading starts, the operator should set the loader kickouts on the soft keypad in the cab. The linkage should be positioned before pressing the kickout button. Shown here, the operator is setting the lower kickout. This stops the bucket before contact is made with the floor. The upper kickout should also be set to provide only the required amount of dump clearance needed for loading the truck. Excessive lifting is not efficient. The return to dig kickout should also be set to ensure the bucket edge returns to a level position. This can be done by placing the bucket on the ground in a level position. Always maintain a smooth work floor with good drainage. Keep loose rocks off the floor. Wet rocks cut tires easier. Develop smooth movements. Keep bucket heel slightly raised. Avoid tire spin by using the left pedal ICTC. Use a tight V pattern for truck loading. Spot the trucks on the driver's side. Spot trucks with a loaded bucket. Blow horn to stop trucks when spotting and when truck is loaded. In coarse material, pad the truck body. Place the load. Don't throw the load into the truck bed. Place the load in the center of the truck bed. Keep hoist height to a minimum for efficiencies in loading and to minimize truck wear to the truck bed. Avoid excessive bucket heel plate wear. Use proper technique for setting adjustable bucket kick out. When digging, raise the bucket to provide heel clearance before crowding. This allows the operator to properly set the tires. The left pedal controls the impeller clutch and brakes. Depressing the left pedal reduces torque to the wheels. When all three lights are illuminated, max rim pull on the keypad, the pedal varies rim pull from 100% to roughly 20%. As you turn the lights out on the keypad, rim pull is reduced 
from 90 to 80 to 70% by default. These settings are adjustable in the touchscreen. When the pedal is depressed about halfway, the brake begins to apply. If you choose to throttle lock the machine, always run in economy mode. This will reduce fuel consumption by up to 20%. Engine speed is controlled with left pedal and implement pod. This feature provides the efficiency of manual throttle and the ergonomics of throttle lock. Position loader one to one and a half wheel revolutions from face to truck. Enter pile straight. Keep frame straight when digging. Avoid digging articulated. Transmission and first gear when digging. This provides balanced ground hydraulic speed. Use a tight V pattern. Spot trucks at 45 degrees. Work face one and a half to two buckets wide. Minimize truck maneuvering when loaded and wait time. Clean floor between trucks. Keep rear truck tires off pile. Keep loose rocks off the floor. Create a pocket to place the truck. The pocket should be no deeper than the distance from the bucket teeth to front tires. Keep a straight frame when digging. Articulate at truck. Use right front tire as a guide when spotting truck. Work the face one and a half to two buckets wide. Center the load in the truck body. Payload placement is critical when loading trucks. Materials should be centered on the truck front to back and side to side. This will provide the most accurate payload reading on the truck. When payload is shifted off center, excessive weight will be on the brakes, bearings, tires, steering components, hydraulic hoist, and canopy. Material will also be more prone to haul road spillage. In this video, you can clearly see the correct way to center the load front to back and side to side. Take notice that the operator is placing each bucket load in the correct order. Loading the center of the truck first, followed by the far side, and last, the closest half of the truck body. This results in more efficient loading and less pushing by the loader operator. Maintain optimum bucket height when carrying material and a safe speed for machine operation. Keep good load retention without spillage. Use ride control if equipped to help stabilize the machine while carrying material. Turn auto shift on and select mode two so the loader will start out in second gear after making your directional change. Also set the max gear in auto shift. This will eliminate manual shifting for the operator and increase efficiency of the loader. Disable second gear lockup when the carry distance allows for third and fourth gear travel. Adjust kickouts when necessary. Avoid over hoisting when loading at lower heights. Articulated digging and corner loading. This will apply excessive load on the frames and hitch assembly, causing cracking or bearing failure. Wait time with an elevated bucket. This should be reduced for best practices and site safety. Never exit the cab with an elevated bucket. To ensure operator safety, all implements should be lowered and ground engaged before exiting the cab. Truck loading V pattern, position loader one to one and a half wheel revolutions from face to truck, enter pile straight, keep frame straight when digging, avoid digging articulated, transmission in first gear when digging, this provides balanced ground hydraulic speed. Use a tight V pattern. Spot trucks at 45 degrees. Work face one and a half to two buckets wide. Minimize truck maneuvering when loaded and wait time. Clean floor between trucks. Keep rear truck tires off pile. Keep loose rocks off the floor. We hope that this video provided you valuable best practices and tips 
for optimal operation of CAT K-Series large wheel loaders. Thank you for taking the time to join us. For more information on CAT large wheel loaders, please contact your local CAT dealer or visit our product pages on cat.com.